My name is Sajidul Talukdar and I'm a fourth year PhD student at Florida International University and I'm working in the cyber security and privacy research lab there. So basically my research is on social network. So we kind of do research on Facebook and similar kind of social networks. And my research is basically uh, to detect the abuse in online social networks, how the abuses occurs in the friends, and is there any way to automatically detect the abuses and how can we prevent the abuses from the friends. Our lab is basically uh, mainly focused on privacy. So privacy was the first concern. So we found that uh, since Facebook is the most popular social network in US and almost all over the world, so people are more willing to have a social network in Facebook rather than having in some other social networks. And mostly the younger population, they have a tendency to share their information and their photos and everything in Facebook. And we found that they are not safely doing it. So they're sharing everything, not knowing that these things are being shared and these things can be used against them in future. So bad people can be spying on them, can be uh, getting the information very easily, just being friend in Facebook. So we, we felt that it's, it's very necessary to find a solution to this problem. So can we detect this abuses in online automatically and can we build some solution so that the people who are not aware of these things, maybe some, some part, a proportion of the population, they're aware and they don't share these things, but most of them are not aware. And we blindly believe the friends. So this is a significant problem. And that was our main motivation to work on the abuse direction in Facebook. It was kind of difficult because uh, in order to get some Facebook data, you need to have the user study with the real participants. So it's not kind of other kind of research where you get some data set from online and you do the research, you, you have a big data set, you do some research. So we need to deal with the real people here. And our goal was to collect the data set from the, across the globe. So we could have easily done that in our university recruited participants from the university students, but that would like make a bias of the population that we are doing. So our goal was to collect the data set from the world. So we used some crowdsourcing websites and we posted our jobs in the crowdsourcing websites. We paid its participants for uh, taking our interviews and taking our user studies. And in order to facilitate them to take the user study, we have built Android apps we uploaded it in uh, Play Store so that the people that are uh, taking the user study from other countries, they can download it from the Play Store and they can follow the instructions on the app and the app is going to tell them what to do, what to answer and what kind of things they need to do. But there were several because uh, it's very difficult to filter the participants when you are not seeing that person online, uh, in, in person. So you are, everything is being done in virtual world. So you don't know who is there doing the user study behind the computer. He might be lying. He might be doing some garbage thing. He might be like just rushing over the questions to get the money. So we needed to have a lot of filters to, you know, uh, filter out all those bad participants. So initially we had this uh, primary filtering where the participants needed to be at least 18 years old. We checked through the birthday in Facebook and we also asked them specifically how old are they and they needed to have an well-established Facebook account. You cannot just make an account and then, does, uh, it, uh, then participate in the, the study. And then you need to have access to the Android device for sure, because otherwise you cannot take the app. And then we had some attention check questions at the beginning of the app to check whether the participants really understand the instructions and 
they are actually paying the attention. So if somebody failed at the beginning screening steps, they were refused to take participate in the user study. And in the user study, we selected uh, friends from their friend list to ask questions ag about those friends. And we also created some bogus friends, like fake profiles. And we also mixed these fake profiles together with the real ones. And like, observe how the user is answering the questions for the fake ones. Do they really identify this this person is not their real friend? And if they were in an automated mode, they are just trying to answer everything, they would fail in that check. So that was one of the other checks. And then we had uh, the timing checks where we recorded the time the user takes to click on each of the uh, events and to check how many time they took to answer the questions. And if they were really going fast, we have discarded the data because we know that they were not paying attention. So these were the primarily filtering things that we did. I already said we had an Android app. We named the app as AbuseSniff. So when the user participated in the user study, the app would store the data from their responses in the local stories of the app and then send it over the server to our lab. So the server uh, storage was pretty secured. So there was no way somebody could hack and you know get the information out there. And we also conducted the user study according to the IRB approval. So um, there was no way that the personally identifying information of the users who are participating in the study could be revealed. So we were pretty uh, cautious on that thing. And at the initial phases, we needed to send the data to the server because we had to do the machine learning and supervised learning based on these data sets. And then we actually built the model based on the data sets that we collected and embedded those models in the app. So there was no need to send the data over the server because it could be, you know, if you send the data over the server, Somebody going over the internet is not safe. So then we prevented this thing in the later studies. So the app would itself analyze the data, and then show the things, and just at the end, send the summary to the server. For the machine learning, we have tested several machine learning algorithms. So we tested mostly like 10 to 12 machine learning algorithms. And the important thing were the decision trees, the support vector machines, the random forest, the part, multi-class classifier, nav bias, and all those classifiers. And the software that you used for the machine learning is Weka. So it's an open source software. So you can use, anybody can use that software. Anybody can uh, customize the software based on their needs. So based on that data set that we collected, we identified several mutual activity features from the participant and their Facebook friends. And we fitted those data in the uh, Weka classifiers for the uh, training purpose. So for the training, we built the model after the training and then tested the test data sets on the models. And then the outcome was pretty impressive. So we tested all the machine learning algorithms and then choose the best performing classifier for each of the predictions. Weka has some library for Android that you can embed the model, so in the Android itself. So when we build the model, we save the model in the computer. And when we build the app again, we actually embedded the model inside the app. So there was no need to communicate outside again. So it's the standard machine learning thing. Um, you collect the data set and you identify your classes. If the classes are not balanced, if the data set is imbalanced, so you balance your data set. There are several methods to balance the data set, so you can use anything. And if there is any missing information in the data set, 
or some bad data, corrupted data set, you can just filter out all those things, keep the good data sets, uh, balance all the data sets, and then train your classifiers on those. Um, basically, our study was pretty impressive. So, in the, in the initial studies, we tried to find, like, is the abuse in uh, Facebook really a problem in Facebook? We didn't know what is the people's uh, perception of abuse in Facebook. So, basically, the first studies were to identify the abuse. And we found that uh, in the initial studies, we had 80 participants and 71 out of 80 participants had a friend whom they believed is either a stranger. So by stranger, we meant uh, the person has no interaction with that friend in Facebook or in real life. So one of, 71 out of 80 was either a, a stranger or a Facebook timeline abuser or a newsfeed abuser. So timeline abuser means the friend is posting some abusive material in your timeline. So in your timeline, you have the photos, you have the status updates, you have the check-ins. So the person is putting some bad things there. And the news feed abuser means the person itself is posting some fake news, some malicious link, some malware, and that is being spreaded in your news feed. And you can accidentally click, and then you can be attacked by the malware, or you can be, you know, attacked by the fake news, spam. Initially, our approach was pretty much strict, so we, we kind of took the hard approach. So we identified the abuse and then suggested actions for those abusive friends. So the actions ranged from unfriending the friend to the unfollowing. So we suggested to unfollow, to restrict the access, or to unfriend. And we found that when we, uh, when we presented them to unfollow, they mostly agreed. When we took, tell them to restrict the access, they agreed. But in terms of unfriending, they were kind of, you know, they were confused. Because if they unfriend the friend, they would lose the connection. So even if the friend is abusive, there might be a lot of reasons why you should keep that friend in Facebook. He could be your boss in your office. He could be your colleague. He could be your maybe childhood friend. So you need to have that person in Facebook, but you might be the victim of the abuse from that person. And then we introduced a novel action that we call sandboxing. So by sandboxing, we mean that a person will still be in your friend list, but he will have no communication with you in Facebook. So whatever you do in Facebook, you will not be able to see them, and whatever they do will not be in your news feed. So they will have no way to identify that you have done something with their friendship. So they will still see that you are still his friend, but there is no communication, so this is the sandboxing. And then we offered sandboxing instead of unfriending. And then the result was amazing. People were willing to un sandbox rather than unfriending. I feel like most of the things we did was impressive. So I don't feel we, did, we, we have to do anything if I am given the chance to revert. But uh, one of the things was, um, it would, be glad, it would be better if we could have done more user studies with more data sets. Since we were limited to the crowdsourcing sites, so we had no way to recruit more participants more than this. And then since we had to ask the questions for each friend, so we could ask only 30 friends for each participant. And some of the participants had up to 5,000 friends. So like we have suggested them for only these 30 friends. So we couldn't see the other rest of the 5,000 friends. So if there is any system that, that can automatically do this for all the friends, that would be better. So this is our future direction. Maybe we'll go that in direction. In 
in this research, uh, we did this for the existing friends. So whoever is your old, already friends. And then our next goal is to uh, identify somebody at the friend request level. So when you get a friend request from some, someone, you have no way other than seeing how many mutual friends you have and the picture and the name of the, and the, and the short, maybe short affiliation on that person. But if you had some way that you know, the machine can do the detection, it can analyze your profile and that person's profile, cross match everything, and then do the machine learning to predict whether this person would be abusive after being friend. Then you know, it can show you the, the warnings. You should friend this guy or you should unfriend or not friend this guy. That this is our next project that we are working on. I mean, social network is a huge thing. So, I mean, you, one person cannot do everything. So we have like tons of social medias. So we are only doing this in Facebook. So there are several types of abuses in Twitter, every other things. So, I mean, whatever you feel that there should be a system to uh, help people, because people are generally not aware. You know the Cambridge Analytica where you know, somebody collected a data set from 87 million users, and then they actually changed the user perception in the election. So that was pretty bad. So we should have some system that people, are if they're interested in the research, they should try to find some existing problems in the system, and then try to find a solution. How can they solve this problem? And then maybe go, to, go for the method that I should go for this method or that method. So identify the problem, then try to find a solution, then go for the method. Our project was intended to be an automated system that can be a social network assistant for people who are using Facebook and who are not aware of their friends and who are unlikely to know all of their friends. So this tool can be a handy thing for them to you know, help them identify the bad ones and keep the good ones and monitor if somebody is doing bad things. So we, we wish we could build this tool you know, in a very good way and people can use this thing. And then it would be you know, good for the whole community, like for Facebook and all the, all the people out there.